Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Brownlee from Boris Effect. And in this short tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the zap filter and showing you how we can change the popular electricity filter to turn into something a little bit different. And we're going to be doing this by stacking a few effects together to create a completely different result. And then once we've done that, I'm going to add one extra filter to show you how we can completely change the nature of the effect we have into all of these different examples. And as with a lot of the things that we create, we start with some very humble beginnings, as you can see here. And in fact, even this starts off as something even more simple. So let's create up our first electric ring. And I'm going to do this by creating up a new solid. And we will call this one Zap1. And we're going to come into Sapphire Render and go Zap. And Zap's a very popular effect for creating lightning. And we look at our presets in the preset browser. You can see we can actually do something even more than just lightning. Uh, we've got like fiery branches and some interesting tree style effects. Or even creating up a little flame there. But we're going to start off just with a default lightning. And let's just load that in. Okay, and to make this work, I just need to have my lightning going from one side of the screen and then set my endpoint to the other side of the screen. So we end up with something that looks a little bit like that. Uh, we can change up all the wiggles as we need to uh, and change up the colors we need to a little bit later. But for now, we'll just leave it at default. So let's make this into a ring. And the easiest way of doing that, it's coming into Sapphire again and going Sapphire, Distort, Polar. And Polar is one of my favorite effects not just for effects like this, but also for taking something that looks like a bit more of a tiled motion background and giving us a nice unexpected result. We've got our lightning ring here. It's stretching outside the edges of our composition. We don't want that. So I'm just going to come in and take the outer radius down to about 600. And then I'll just scrub through to make sure that that's not going to stretch outside. That's, that's going to look all right. So now I want to give this a slightly different effect, something slightly more textured. And we're going to create a bit more of a glassy effect. And if I look under Sapphire Stylize, I have Emboss Glass. And this creates a black snake, which uh, is interesting, but not quite what we're after. So I pop into the preset browser, see if I've got something a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. This is Always a great way of figuring out what an effect can do uh, by looking at some of the presets. Maybe the frozen window pane is going to help me out a little bit there. It's got a negative bump scale. So if we turn the bump scale up, we get a bit more of a ring. I can even change the steps up a little bit to get more gradations between the colors. But I'm going to leave this low because it's, it's working, but it's not quite what I'm after yet. So I'm going to add another distortion to take it even further away from that original zap. And that's going to be warp puff. So puff is there to puff stuff out or to take it, if I take it a little bit negative, it also shrinks that in a wee bit. And I'm beginning to like where we are with that. Okay, so now we've got our first little effect. And this effect doesn't look like much, but this is the building block that we're going to use to build up the rest of our effect. So once we've got that in place, these four filters, Zap, Warp Polar, Emboss Glass, and Warp Puff, I'm going to come up and start making adjustments to the top effects. So for example, in the Zap Color, maybe I'll find a slightly more suitable color that I want. So possibly one of the blues, something like that. With the branchiness, maybe I'll, I'll add some more pronounced branching. And I can even do things like varying the width of the bolt, making the bolt fatter or thinner as I need to. It's looking kind of interesting now. I'm basically just playing around with it. And at this stage, there is no right and wrong. We're just kind of getting a feel for a basic shape. Okay, cool. So now we've got one ring. I'm going to duplicate this up and make some very minor tweaks to it. So we start to build up a little bit of depth here. 
So I'm going to have my layer selected and just duplicate that. I'll set my blend mode to add and let's start to, to change things. Now on the zap, if I want to make a completely different looking zap using the exact same parameters, all I have to do is change the random seed. So this just changes what the random point is that I'm starting with. So that's easy if we want to keep everything else the same. Now, if we come to Warp Polar, I want to add a little bit of animation to this now. So I do like the idea of adjusting the start angle. Or even better, I'm going to add an expression to this angle by holding down Alt or Option and clicking on the stopwatch. And I've got an expression down at the bottom here. And I like the start angle of 124. So I'm going to say 124 plus time multiplied by a number. Um, and this can be any sort of number we want. I'm going to start with six here just to see how fast that goes. We don't want a number that goes too fast uh, at this stage. We don't want it spinning around too quickly. We just want to add a little bit of animation to it. That looks all right. And now it's just a case of changing up the embossed glass. So the areas that are getting embossed look different and decidedly different. So I can change up things like the bump threshold and the bump smooth and even the bump scale. I'll also take the brightness down so we get some smaller wisps here. So we just look at that there. We've got something that's a lot more wispy than we had previously, yet it's still sharing a sort of similar look to it. So same but different. I can even change the puffiness just a wee bit there as well. So that is Zap 2. I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. Edit Duplicate. It's now called Zap 3. I will change the random seed. Something completely different. I'll come in, I'll change the angle up again as well. So if I hit E to open up my effects and I'll open up my warp polar, there's the angle. And let's just give it a completely different random start point and change the speed at which it's rotating. So this time it's going to be 240 plus time times 10. So we're getting the same but different. Let's just preview that one out, the solo that there. And I'll do the same thing with the embossed glass. In fact, what I might do with the embossed glass is just reset it so we get a completely different look. Change the bump scale, take the threshold down to zero, smooth that out a little bit, and just adjust the warp. So we get something around about that there. Maybe increase the number of steps so it's not quite as noticeable. And when it comes to the uh, warp puff. Might just shrink this down a little bit. So take this to minus 0.2. There we go. So we've got variations on a theme here. And if we play that back, there we go. We've got something warping around, looking kind of interesting and not too dissimilar from where we started back here. And this one's a little bit slower because I changed the, the wiggle speed. Maybe I'll adjust the wiggle speed on two of these. So some of these are wiggling faster than others. So I'll set one, set zap one to wiggle at 1.4, set zap two to wiggle at one, and I'll leave zap three to wiggle at 0.4. So we've just got a little bit of variation there as well. Okay, so. Great, so far so good. And this is a really nice spot. Uh, probably the only, the only thing I'm worried about a little bit is the size of this one here. So I'm just going to come into my zap and change the bolt width up a little bit and change the branch length down so that we don't have anything 
stretching out over the edges of the screen. Make a little, little adjustment to the embossed glass again so we get more of a blue tinge here. And I'm going to give you the secret to stop this from just looking interesting to looking really interesting. And it's a very simple step to get us looking from here to here. And I'm going to apply this to an adjustment layer because I want to do one effect across all of the zaps that we've created so far. And I'm going to add Sapphire's Glow. And I could just go to Sapphire Lighting, Glow, and start to add in a bit of glow on this here. Change the threshold down, start to glow it up. I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to use an effect that I showed in a, in a previous tutorial using the builder to create a bigger, better glow. And I'm going to load that one in. And if you haven't watched that tutorial yet, do it immediately after watching this one, because this will explain what we're doing here. But the basic idea is that I'm going to come in and create a series of glows stacked upon each other. It's going to give me a more interesting effect. With my final glow at the bottom here, giving me a bit of atmosphere as well, so a bit of smoke. And I'll just adjust those values up so they're bright enough, but not too bright. There we go. So it, gets, it gives us sort of a neon lighting look. Which I really like. Cool. And once we've got the glow going, you know, something magical starts to happen. And I'm going to come in and just make some small final changes to this to make sure that everything's looking right. So it just means making small tweaks to the embossed glass with the bump scale, the warp size. And the same with zap number two. Actually, zap number two looks pretty good. Zap number three, I think, needs to be just a little bit, a little bit bigger. So what I might do with this one is just return us to the original random seed, which is 0 0.123. So we get something that's close to the first one. And I'll come in and I'll tweak up the color here a little bit. Just as the zap color and the glow color. So if we ran preview this, we get a much more cool looking electric circle made out of our zap. I want to give this a little bit more depth. You can either duplicate up some more layers here, or we can add in another couple of bolts just in our regular lightning there. And this might be a little bit too bright. So I'll come into my zap color. I'll keep the same basic color, but just maybe make it a bit darker. There you go, somewhere around there maybe. And once we've got it here, we can create a lot of different variations on this theme just by adding one more effect. So in this example, I've taken my basic streaky rings and added S streaks to it. That's a couple of versions of S streaks and it ends up looking something like this. And in this example here, I've taken the basic, that same basic one, and added S edge rays to it. And we end up with something that looks like this when it's animated. We can also do things with warp fisheye. And a bit of a feedback bubble, which looks kind of cool like that. And animated it looks like this. Or use infinite zoom and warp bubble again to get a laser beam that's coming right out towards the screen. And if you want to learn more about Infinite Zoom, check out this tutorial here. It's a very flexible and varied filter that you can do a huge number of things with that you wouldn't immediately think of. And if you're working with Sapphire 2020, you'll also have access to one of my favorite new plugins, which is S Free Lens, which I've animated up to give us an effect that looks like this probably a little bit different than some of the other free lens examples you've seen, for example, in this tutorial here, but just shows you how changing a couple of parameters can have such a huge difference on the end result. So have a bit of an experiment with the electric rings 
and see what you can create. And you can even do things like pushing the, the warp puff up quite a bit and adjusting the colors or the bigger, better glow to make sure that things aren't blowing out too much. So in this example, we've been working with Zap, but one of my favorite things to do with Sapphire FX is to build up something that looks quite humble at the beginning and then just add different copies of it over the top. And you'll be amazed at seeing what adding a bit of glow can do to this experiment. And then once I've got it in this area, just adding one more effect will completely change the overall mood of the piece. If you want to download this file to have a little look and unpick it, the link is in the description below. If you create something cool with it or give it your own special twist, then leave a link in the comments. I'm always amazed by the creativity of people who work with Sapphire. My name is Ben Brownlee from Boris Effects. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to know more about Zap, Sapphire Builder, or any of the other effects that you've seen here, head on over to boriseffects.com where you find all the details and trial downloads of all the Boris Effects software. You'll also find a treasure trove of hours of tutorials to help get you started.